millennia ago, when the elemental creatures came into being, the shadows gave birth to a terrible fiend whose sole purpose was to hunt the creatures, to trap and bind them in the darkness and drain them of their power. He is known among the protectors as Umarak, which in their tongue means shadow. English motherfucker, do you speak it? Hello there everyone, this is ShadowGear655 here doing a review of Umarak, the villain of the first half of 2016. And a little bit of a spoiler, I kind of really love him. Okay, so yeah, here he is. As in the intro stated, he's like the, the hunter. He hunts the great beasts who are kind of just the great beings of this generation. I don't know, maybe, I, I, I don't. If they all predate most of the figures we know now, then I guess they're more important than ever? I guess? I don't know. But yeah, here, here's Umarak in all of his glory. My guess. Alright, so first off, let's just start out with the legs as I usually do. The feet are a bit interesting because they're these, you know, technically, like very technically, with three Hordika necks per leg. That's super interesting i mean we usually don't see stuff like this in ccbs builds then again this new wave of bionicle as well as um some of the more recent star wars and sets uh they've been messing around with more technic stuff and i've been digging that i think that's really cool the look of the legs um is nowhere near as smooth well I, smooth perhaps isn't the right word um it clashes with the, with the ccbs build as in this whole upper body is more or less CCBS for the exception of these legs, and it clashes just a tiny bit. But I think it's I think it's okay. I, I like the way it looks. Uh, the little green toesies I like. I love this color trans green still. It's beautiful, beautiful looking. Uh, feet are good. These little spike pieces in dark red. Oh, they're, I'm happy to have them. I mean, I don't have a use for them right now, but I know that's a piece I'm probably going to be using in the future for something. I don't know what. Then you move on to the... Like itself, I mean, man, th I think I understand why this is out so much, but I feel like eh, the support is needed, but it sticks out just a tad too much. Also, this spare thing here, I mean, I never tried this until now, but let's try taking this armor piece off from the leg and putting that on the back. Um... Yeah, that, that is a bit too bulky. Just just a bit. Or maybe from the side? Nah. Because if you do it from the side, it kind of hinders some things. I'm not going to bother doing that then. Oh, I got it. But yeah, it, there's some... There's swivel, swivel, swivel. All the, ball, all the ball joints work. So it gives that kind of... That Wendigo kind of a digitigrade leg look. With still carrying the function as a normal leg design. Um, If I were to remove this, if I can easily enough... Does the leg still... Like, it's still durable, but probably not by LEGO standards. Like, it can still... It can hold its own. It does look a tad weird, though. I will say that. So, yeah. I like the legs a bit. I think the legs are cool. Uh, the upper legs are... Nothing particularly fancy going on here. Just some CCBS. Ah, uh, CCBS. But you do have his sword here on the side. I'll get to the weapons a little bit later. And then you have this little ammunition pocket watch thing. So most of the Toa size sets have, well, the ones that have launchers anyway, they have this little wheel piece here with extra studs. They, they hold the extra studs on the figure. I think that's really cool. I like that inclusion quite a bit. However, it's a bit odd on Umarak because he just has this dangling disc off of his hip, which it's a bit strange. And it's probably one of the weirdest inclusions of the, in this set, but you know what? With him as well as the other Toa, I, I like the fact they included some extra storage for ammunition pieces. Especially on Onua. We'll, we'll get to Onua some other time. But yeah, he's got a sword here and everything, and that is all hunky-dory. Now, with this mock... Not mock, I say. It's not a mock. With this set, I have made a couple modifications to my personal kind of build. 
And this is the first out of the two that I have. As I mentioned previously, I feel like this Hordika neck kind of sticks out a bit too much, even though it does add support to the heel. Instead, I just pushed it in one more to kind of give it more of a flush look. And the articulation still stands. It, it still works perfectly fine, as well as going side to side and all that. You just lose a little bit of support because now the heel is around, more rounded than ever. So I feel like um, whenever I pose this guy, he's fine, you know, holding his crossbow out like this, but primarily if you were to, whoa, if, if you were to have the crossbow stored on his back, he would have a hard time kind of, you know, he'd be too back heavy at that point for him to really have stable feet. But yeah, that's a, that's a small little adjustment I like to make on this guy because I think it makes the leg look a little bit better. Before we move on to the torso, I really probably should talk about the gimmick of all the Toa size sets. Um, are these little gears on the backs of them, backs of their butts, which are used to add a swivel function. So they can kind of swing back and forth, actually very similar to how the rock she did it. Uh, oh, well that's interesting. Doesn't my, I haven't, I don't, I didn't haven't really mess with this gimmick all that much because I haven't really cared about it up until I do this review because I want to show everything the set has to offer. Um, if you pull on it too much, you just ruin the gimmick because I kind of pulled this gear out to where the gimmick just kind of stopped. But I was just doing that naturally. Just, ah, oh, God, that squeak as well. So something about these new sets is that a lot of them are particularly, like the pieces are tight, not just the joints, but like the pieces themselves are rather stiff. And I can't really explain why. And these kind of gear hips oh god that's really tight um people have said in the comments of other videos i think it was the podcast people were saying that if you remove that piece from the waist back and forth it loosens it up and it doesn't have a noise anymore which i believe it but i don't really want to try it one because i don't care about the gimmick that much and two i don't want to just like you know force a piece out of there when i really don't feel like it i don't know but yeah there's that gimmick for you Moving on to the torso itself, I think the torso is fan friggin tastic. Uh, I love the reuse of the skull villain rib cage here. I love this piece. I'm happy it's reused on him and Onua as well. Very good piece. This chest piece is beautiful. It's a beautiful looking chest piece. Yeah, the the, the look on that chest is just like that mouth there and these little eye looking things and like the the wood, like that. This is a, this is a Wendigo ass Wendigo and also just like a woodsman type look i mean that just looks gorgeous to me i love that chest piece like enough to where i would use it in a mock and i would it wouldn't be a distraction by how using it and being like oh hey that's umarak's chest piece that looks weird i don't know it's all right then we move on to the shoulders which are the little spike trap dude uh, and there's a little action feature not action feature play feature with that but uh as for now they're used as shoulder pads i think that looks really cool the only thing that's stopping it from looking cool is the shoulder placement. I do feel the shoulders sit away too low on this mock. I mean, not mock set. Oh, why do I keep saying that? I haven't it's been so long since I've done a set review. It's a bit distracting. But yeah, um, I think the shoulders sit way too low on this set. I think from the back, it's a bit distracting because you, you see a lot of that. From the front, it looks okay if you like move these shoulder pads kind of downish. It doesn't look as bad, but it's just, just this big, like, empty space just floating around here. And you know what? The shoulder articulation, it doesn't bother me as much anymore. Because I a big pet peeve of mine, especially with mocks, is that when people use a Hordika neck like this configuration for the shoulder, the arm does not sit flush down. It works fine with this because there's a little bit of give here in the elbows for it to sit flush. But I, that's just me having a really bad pet peeve with that. I've grown to be more accepting of it in mocks and sets. So there is that. Another alteration that was mentioned in the podcast, and I just alluded to it now, is that if you move the shoulder up by one notch, that way there's just nothing there on the bottom, that shoulder pad looks way more filled in. And it doesn't hinder an articulation. I mean, you can't move his arm up as you could originally, at least I assume. Oh, wait, no, you, well, it's, it's arguable. It, it really is. But I, I like the look way up more. It makes his arm more in proportion to his body. Like the fist kind of stops here at the side of the leg, like kind of right around there. That works perfectly fine. Shoulders more filled in. He just looks, 
more together. Um, I love the way that looks. I think that looks really nice. Arm itself, nothing really cool to write home about. Uh, our nice recolor that we have is this um, Hero Factory arm or CCBS arm. I've been better about that. I haven't called it Hero Factory in quite a while. But you do have this arm piece with the little hole right there. They don't take advantage of it, but for a mockist, it's always great to have that kind of piece and that different variety and different style. And then we move on to the head. I love the way this mask looks quite a lot. I, it do, Although it does fall into the realm for me personally to where the mock is so... Not the mock, the mask is so distinctive. I can't really see it as anything else but Umarak's mask. Kind of the same thing with Makuta's and Akimu's mask as well. And don't worry, we'll get to Makuta's mask as well. But yeah, it's it's a really cool just translucent mask with some you know black kind of black printing built into it. That's him with his mask. Hey. I I just love the way this thing looks. I it just it looks like candy. This thing literally looks like a piece of just like hard candy. It's beautiful. And then we move on to the biggest elephant in the room, which are these horns. I, to be honest with you, I don't know if the community is really up in arm about these horns. I, up in arm about these horns. That's what I said. These horns look cool to me. I, I think they're just large enough and ridiculous enough to really sell me on them. And also, like, they're not as fragile as, like, Skull Bashers, for example, when it comes to knocking off the mask. Because if I, if I flick it, the mask doesn't come off. Ah, uh, but if I if I really just hold down the head, I can off that mask off. Um, also, there is the inclusion of a new eye stalk piece back here as well, which isn't too different, but there's not as large of a notch behind the head to knock off the mask. So there is that. I I think that's that's nice. I think they realized, oh wait, these masks are falling off. These heads way too much. We need to fix that, and they did. It's way better. But I like these horns. I like the color. I like the dark tan inclusion. I. I just love the woodsy kind of nature theme of this set. I think it looks super duper rad. Uh, so let's move on to some other features and weapons and such. As stated previously, there is a little thing with his shoulder pads. Uh, you can remove them here. They're just, they're just pegged into there. And I can kind of just take these and move them down. And now you can see more of a difference in his shoulders because I did not change that upon, upon switching to here. There's this extra little ratchet joint here on the back, which is used for making the little trap guy. So I'm gonna take that off as well. Um, and in addition to that, if you wanna give him a little legs, um, Umarak's little toesies are the way to make the legs. So upon making this creature, all you really have to do is take this ratchet joint, put that together, put this together, and then you kind of, at least the way I have mine set up, um, you have to take the chain off that's hanging off of him. Which has another nice inclusion. I do like the, I do like the chain quite a bit. Or the chain motif. Now he has a chain on his back. Close that up. And then you remove his toes. And then you have a little bear trap guy. And I, I've stated this in the podcast as well. I love these bear trap guys so much more than the skull spiders. I love the look of them, I love the gimmick, and the thing in particular I like, this one doesn't do it, but sometimes you can fold the legs up to a point to where you can make this thing completely flat. This one you really can't. But the gimmick works, like if you were to put pressure onto this ratchet, it clamps down, and it doesn't collapse my finger, but it could you know, trap a foot of a, of a toy in there, like that's, that's really cool. Also the fact that there's a chain on it, like an actual bear trap. Like, I love that little gimmick. You know what, Umarek, he looks a little more um, slender now, but it's it's just a little extra bonus for him. I, I do like the inclusion of this sixth one that we don't get with Kopaka, but we get one with Umarek, and it's a play feature with the, the set. That's cool. I love that a lot. Next, we move on to the weapons. Uh, I'm going to cover this first. You know, there's obviously the crossbow to talk about. But we do have this little sword piece that he has hilted right in his side. So most of you are aware, I reviewed the set Skull Warrior. I built it wrong. Uh, I didn't know how to store the crossbow on the back, nor did I know how, to, how the staff really worked. 
and this is not a situation to where you unpeg this and then find a way to put this onto his hand. No, that's not how it works. Instead, rather, you treat this connector here as the hand and then take this sword, plug that into the hand, and then take that and plug it into the bomb to give it the illusion that it's a big staff or a handle. And then he has his sword. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to mess that up this time. Although I will say the instructions still don't tell you about this. I came to this conclusion on my own and I know it's really obvious. I wish it was that obvious for me when I reviewed Skull Warrior. Yeah. But in addition, we do have the crossbow. Uh, I'm not going to go through the effort of putting it in his hands because you saw that at the beginning. But this is probably my least favorite thing of the set. I, I think the crossbow, it's not even a good version of like the protector one. It's like, I like having the black piece here, the black launcher. That's nice. Uh, these dark tan kind of spider leg pieces. I like having these as well. It just seems kind of lazy to me having this little thing. Um, I feel like it could have been built a little bit better. Although you can store, you can store this on the back uh, by putting it right here on that and then there you got the you got the bow and arrow crossbow thing on his back and you know what yeah i did it i didn't mess up this time oh man uh also to mention while we're here is that he does have a connector on his back for any of the beasts to be put onto him i'm not going to go through putting the beasts on him you can kind of mess around with that yourself but yeah you i love the fact that there's connector back there so like that adds to one of the cooler things i like about this new wave is that when you get the beast you can put it onto any toa it's not built for one particular toa like the fire one doesn't go with tahu the fire one can go with anyone um and some of the some of them look good on him i like the um, the beast of air or jungle beast of jungle whatever it is it looks really good on him overall as well so that's that for that Last thing I really feel like I need to mention in this is that it does come with Makuta's mask, the mask of control. And you know what? It, it's a perfectly serviceable mask. I, I think it looks fine. However, um, considering the lore of this G2 series, and we know that Akimu is immediately linked to Makuta, one of these things looks way better than the other. Although I will say, um, I would have trouble using Akimu's mask here as in mask for another mock per se, because this looks way too much like a Kimu. And you can't even do the thing where you flip it like this as like a helmet, because you know it's just a giant claw. Or maybe just use it as an actual claw, I don't know. But I like a Kimu's mask as more as like an ornament piece. Makuta's to me, um it does look like Makuta's. I kinda wish it was wider and more angle more angular, but I don't know. But this can pass as like, you know, a good looking crown piece or like I don't know, but it has the same lines and scripture that Akimu's has. And I think as a pair, they look fine. It's just, um, I wish the mask looked a little bit better. I don't know. Overall, I think Umarak is fantastic. I, when the League pictures came out, I was super jazzed about him because he looked cool to begin with, and I got more than I expected with him. I think it's really rad. His colors are rad. The, the, the piece recolors, like the red spikes, the arm here. Uh, the antler bits too like there's some there's some great stuff in here and the thing that blew me away the most is that with really just a couple modifications this guy is actually a really cool toy too like an actually fun figure like tempted enough to even just maybe get another one just to keep it around or make like a mock version of it and revamp it like i love the way this guy looks so much um it was funny when i was um toa juni came here uh, a few weeks back uh, during Christmas time, and we picked this, these sets up there and then. We're building them together, and I just looked over her, and I'm like, I think this is my favorite G2 set. She goes, really? Yeah, this is my favorite G2 set. And you know what? I'm... This guy's really great, and he's a great standalone thing, too. Like, if you don't care about the new sets all that much, but you still want to pick up one of them, number one, get Umarak for, like, play value. You know, you get Makuta's mask as well. Like, colors, piece usages, play value, like, knocked it out of the park with this. Like, I love this set. So, anyway, this is Shadow Gear 655. Hope you all enjoyed the review, and have a cool day. Bye-bye!